You ate that. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, this is your first time here. Welcome to my beauty entertainment channel, long time no see, but I'm back. So before I start, if you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram, go have fun on there. And then before this, I posted videos. I know the Degrassi video was right before this, I do not recall what was right before that. It has been a little minute and I'm very late when it comes to what I'm talking about today, but I really enjoyed it, so I still want to talk about it despite me being a month late. So as you can tell from the title of today's video, also hair color change, never mind. These are about to come out actually in like a couple days. But today, as you can tell from the title of my video, we're gonna be talking about Fate, The Wing Saga, season two. So last year I made a video on season one. If you haven't seen that, go watch that. Um, same disclaimer I made in that video. I have never seen the original Wing Saga. Um, so I always do that when I'm like talking about like reboots and stuff. So you can understand that I'm perhaps not coming from the same perspective you are. Um, so you don't harass me. That's it, essentially. So today we're gonna talk about, ow. We're gonna be talking about Fate, The Wing Saga, season two. So as I usually do, we're gonna talk about all the characters. And I haven't done my makeup since the Degrassi video at all. I, actually, that's not true. I did my makeup once, but I use, I'm, I'm trying to use, I wanna use the Yummy Balm again today. So I haven't used it since the last time I used it, which was like three months ago. Anyways, we're first gonna start off with all the adults in this show. Um, a collective descriptor for all the adults is spineless. Spine, I, I was trying to come up with a different word, but I, I really think spineless perfectly encapsulate the specific brand of loserdom that these adults partake in. But the first adult we're gonna start with actually is Rosalind. I don't know why I thought Rosalind was a bit more of, um, I want to say smarter than that. I don't know what made me think that because I was clearly incorrect, but this season showed me it, it's, 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 it's not giving. It's not giving. So first, she was trying, first of all, ah, damn, it fell. I can't use that on my face. Okay. Regardless. So she, oh, my brushes are all the way over here. Sorry. She, to me, why I say she's spineless, it's less spineless for her, more that I can't take her too seriously because I don't think she took herself too seriously. Let's look at all the faults that went under her reign at this school. So first of all, you're closing the library, you're chaining up students in your basement, and you're like, why do people dislike me? Why are people scared of me? And I, she says she claims, again, because everything coming out of her mouth, I don't necessarily believe, that I, it was to study them or whatever. I hate doing this to them because it makes it all gunky, but I dropped the fucking spatula and I'm not, yeah, I'm not putting that on my face. Anyways, and she wanted to study them, but I'm like, it's still weird that you did it for long enough that people got suspicious of you, that people were like, hmm, what kind of like ethical issues does um, Rosalind have going on in our, in our basement? It's not their fault that you were hurting children. And like to talk, why were, why were, like, why were you doing that? Like, why were you doing that and not even, you didn't even, you didn't even know that people were getting suspicious of you and now they're exposing you in front of all of your high esteemed guests and that's when you want to share the truth? It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very big bozo. Like, you let them believe that you were purposefully harming children for your own personal gain, which I think was still happening, instead of being, instead of wanting to, you know, stop the rumors, but you wanted to be perceived as this demogorgon like headmistress who students are afraid of. Like, that's why nobody likes you. That's why. And to even just come back to her, her quote unquote reign, because if you let that many blood witches into your school, is it really a, a reign? 
Like you let, they let not one, but two blood witches into their school. And she wasn't in charge when Sebastian was there, but she was at the school at the same time. I'm talking about the old great and powerful Rosalind who can do, who can, has gray eyes and do all kinds of magic chick, could not sniff out a blood witch. Rosalind who hates blood witches so much, she went and burned them all to the ground, could not sniff out a blood witch in all her power. I'm sorry, what's the point of magical power if you can't tell forged paperwork? What's the point in our magical power if you can't even tell if paperwork, if school application paperwork is forged? The school was so unserious. Two blood witches breached your walls. This is supposed to be, Althea is supposed to be the best of the best of the best school. So how many blood witches are at these other schools? Or is this just an Althea problem? Because it's not making much sense to me personally at all. And she's dead, and she deserves to be. I don't know, Here's a, this is where I was like, Rosalind's a little bit, of course she's unserious, but at least in like from a villain sense, I was like, okay, maybe she's a serious villain. How are you gonna try to murder the girl with the dragon flame? The dragon flame that everyone is so afraid of, the dragon flame that Sebastian's like killing and sucking people's souls and powers with for, how are you going to underestimate the dragon flame? That's where I was like, oh, you really don't have it. Like you don't, you don't have that cunningness. I, I guess you just been getting lucky, which makes sense because again, she did let a, oh, 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 let me check my notes, a blood witch into the fairy school. So I thought that was a bit unserious because why is every you're you're not afraid of this thing this flame inside sky that ev not sky bloom that everyone else is afraid of how are you going to try to literally murder her and how you thought that was going to go well she's a bit unserious okay next adult is Silva I think he got off a little bit too easy sorry sorry like and i think he's still like are they getting better now sure but i think he got a bit too easy sky has every right to be angry at you and not want to talk to you in fact if he wasn't angry at you and didn't want to talk to you i would be worried about him plotting to murder you if he like him expressing anger and what you've done would be reassuring to me not because you know my son not son but kind of son is angry at me but because hmm maybe if he was if he was being all nice and kind to you i would be suspicious of a murder plot but that's just me personally and i think i don't know if he like wanted sky or expected sky to like forgive him like that and i'm like don't force it like you were dead wrong Ooh, like yes you know he, you raised him and like whatever 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 but you did lie to him for like his entire life and he just realized that like approximately two weeks ago because of a bunch of other chaotic things that happened i think he has the right to be upset for a little bit and to kind of ice you out for a little bit like don't force like you were wrong like you were dead wrong you were dead wrong when you're dead wrong it's best not to force things it's best, this, 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 here's a life lesson you can, you guys can learn from, we can all learn from Silva. It's best not to force things when you're completely in the wrong. Let the other person take their time, especially since he's your quote unquote son, son, essentially. But, you know, around this environment, sense is not the first step. Fine. Next up is Andreas. I wish it didn't have to be like this, but it is loser. You're Rosalind's lapdog. Where is your spine? Imagine being spineless for, well, Rosalind had a bit of a spine cause she like clearly was running the things, but to underestimate the dragon flame, that's the spineless, that's like, be, that's like delusion. That's like being so confident in yourself that you're delusional to think you could win against the dragon flame. Which is why I'm, but I'm like, imagine being spineless for Rosalind. She underestimated the dragon flame. That's who you essentially like foregoed everybody else for. And Sky had to put your ass in the grave. Ain't that like you did all, you did all, where did, where did licking Rosalind's ulcers get you dead? 
literally dead, not, not just dead, possessed, possessed, and then killed by your son because you were, let's go back, possessed. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, RIP, um, but it's just not very smart. It's a little bit of like, this is your bed, you made it, now it's time to lie six feet under. That's what that, that that's 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 my conclusion from the thing. And then finally, thinking Rosalind would care too deeply about Beatrix to me is incredibly unserious. When has Rosalind shown care for quite literally anybody, including herself? Because I don't think thinking you're gonna win over the dragon flame is showing care for yourself. So, but the thing, like. Believing that she would care about Beatrix, like Beatrix is the same thing, but Beatrix is a teenager. So she has a reason to just put blind trust into adults. You don't. You don't at all. So that doesn't make any sense to me. And that was really confusing to me. Truth, gotta be honest. Gotta be honest. That was really, really confusing to me. So that's Andreas. Next up, next up is the queen of whatever this country is called. I think she's a fucking loser too. I we should have known the kind of person we she is by how she treats her daughter. Like she literally for oh goodness, for like most of this season was like lording liking her daughter, like liking the person you chose to give birth to, to give birth to, liking her. She was like holding that over her daughter's head. She got the bug taken out of that horrifying creature taken out of her because Stella finally kissed your ass and that's the thing like you were willing to have your daughter suffer because she wasn't like literally kissing your ass and was it because your daughter wanted to kind of perhaps sort of think for herself and when she was surprised when Stella was like don't be surprised if I have to choose between my privilege and her friends. That's the thing with parents. Why do you guys never consider that there is an option to never to not choose you? Stella's mom was like, huh? Why wasn't she considering that Stella had an option and it was to not choose you? You're not the only option. Stella's a fairy too. And even if she chooses her friends over you, she's still the queen's daughter. I mean, you can disown her all you want. That's not gonna, unless you kill her you're not really getting rid of forever. So, like, why would Stella choose you? You took away all love and affection and even care for her because she wanted to essentially be her own person for like two minutes. For like two minutes. I just think the queen has nothing but marbles rolling around in her head and her jaw. I don't, like, I just, I just, I just, it's a bit unserious to me. She also can't fucking dress, which just bothers me because you're the queen. Why can't you dress? Um, but yeah, that whole little, like when she was trying to defend um, Bloom and Stella being her lawyer and the mom, like just doing that whole very rancid, very nasty sort of like mini monologue to her was, I didn't like that. I didn't like that, but I mean, are we surprised? No, but don't be surprised when Stella does not talk to you ever again. And then she's gonna be like, Stella, why aren't you talking to me? Let's go back to season one and season two. When have you ever showed Stella that you care about her at all? Besides of her role as a princess. I'll wait. I'm not hearing an answer. I'm not hearing an answer. So we're gonna move on. Next adult is Sebastian. You know, I like drama and I like dramatics, but Sebastian was even a little too dramatic for me. He was overly dramatic. Every single thing about his villainy, every single step of the way was just him being dramatic. Using scrapers to get people's power is so dramatic. You, uh, you're telling me all the magic in this world, there is no other way to take a fairy's power but to use literal demon bugs and crustaceans? He's so dramatic. He's so dramatic. Giant bugs? That is so dramatic. Tying up sky with vines like he's Jesus Christ is so dramatic. 
that was so dramatic. He couldn't go in a, a cage. He, you couldn't just, I don't know, um, blast him off or something. He had to know. You had to use vines to tie him up. Dramatic. Get trying to get in like with an older brother friendship with Bloom and trying to be her friend was dramatic. That was dramatic. Always ending or including in your conversation with Bloom some very cryptic shit about being a teenager is dramatic. He's a drama king. Sebastian is a drama. Even his death was dramatic. He lives for the drama because I guess he's nothing else going for him in his life. Which, you know, Rosalind did kill um his um family. So but does it, why does everybody else have to be responsible for your issues? Why is it now everybody else's problem that you had issues at magic school? I don't understand. I don't understand. He even also underestimated the, the, the dragon flame. Why wouldn't it and all the other fa fairies be able to kill you? Like, yes, you took a lot of fairies' powers. You still don't have the dragon flame. So why are we still underestimating something that the entire kingdom is fucking terrified of? You're talking about, you're talking about your mother didn't want you to have this blah, 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 and you're still under, which I think he was lying, which we'll find out in season three, but I think he was lying because that doesn't make any, how would you know? Did you talk to her mom? Anyways. You're talking about your mom didn't want you to have this death ray, essentially, but you're underestimating it. I don't get it. And I don't really understand, like, I feel like there was a couple steps missing between, like, what happened to Sebastian and his, like, wanting to kill all fairies. Because, so, like, your fairies did kill your, did kill your parents. That happened. Yes, it did. But now you have to kill all fairies? because Rosalind killed your family. But she he wasn't even directly like going after, this wasn't a plot to assassinate her. This wasn't a plot to assassinate Rosalind. Why you gotta kill all fairies? I don't like, I, I, I'm trying to understand the steps there and it seems like the step was delusion. And that's fine, but am I missing something? And here's the thing with Sebastian. Using Beatrix was like that was beyond wicked and wrong, even for you. But seeing what he did to Grey, it makes perfect sense. You know she just wanted to be a part of something so bad. You knew she just wanted to know she had a family so fucking bad. And you took advantage of that, just like Rosalind. Two sides of this, two different sides of the same coin, Rosalind and Sebastian, because they both were like, how are we going to take advantage of this young girl who does, who was an orphan? And because, you know, we were all involved in the killing of her father. How are we going to take advantage of this girl who very clearly has deep seated abandonment issues, mother issues, father issues? How are we going to take advantage of her for our own personal super villain game? And then discard her. Because of course, Bachelor didn't like Beatrix. Nobody liked Beatrix. They just were like, hmm, she thinks that everybody is scared of her. Let's use that to our personal advantage. Let's you let's have her be our like personal lap dog because we can get one over on the teenager. Yay. So that was, you know, a choice. So those are all the adults. And now we're going to talk about, oh my goodness. And now we're going to talk about the students in Fate the Wing Saga. The Wing Saga, is that the tr cool title? I think so. Okay. The first student we have up is Dane. Now Dane is Mr. Big Man on campus. Like we get it. <laughs> okay, we we get it. Like he was doing. He's doing a lot, but I guess it's like whatever the whatever the phrase is, like making up for lost time, or like trying to overcompensate. But like we get it, Dane. You're cool. Like you don't. We don't need to do all of this. Like we 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 understand. You're the big man on campus. We get it. We totally understand. You don't have to keep trying to prove that to me, trying to prove that to you. I don't really know what's going on there, but I hope you figure it out soon. Him trying to, and succeeding kind of at digging into Beatrix, but failed because Beatrix again has nothing to lose. So she was like, nobody likes you. But what he said to her kind of got in her head. She, he was like, nobody's scared of you. They just don't like you. I was gagged. 
didn't last very long because you know Beatrix has a skill of um, digging into people and going to the absolute lowest thing possible but that was kind of funny that was kind of funny like I'm glad that Dame has somebody else to like like besides Riven that was getting a little sad to me that was getting like a little beyond sad to me, especially now since he is self-proclaimed big man on campus. Still being kind of obsessed with Riven is sad. I'm not necessarily blaming you for that, but I'm glad that he has somebody else to be interested in because I need Riven away from everybody, at least in a romantic sense. I until he works out his own issues, we're gonna need to we're gonna need we're gonna need him to stay away from everybody else. And speaking of Riven. He puzzles me because like, I liked him a lot more this season. Maybe it's because he talked less. That could totally be it. But I did like him considerably more this season. I thought he was funny. I thought it was funny this season. I do need him. I do really need him to stay away from everybody in a romantic sense. You can be friends. We can be frenemies. You know, we can have like partner crime. We can do all of those tropes. I just need you to stay away from everybody in a romantic sense. And I mean everybody. I mean everybody. Like, until we see progress in you fixing your own deep-rooted issues, I need you to stay away from everybody else. And I think, I don't think it's asking for too much, truthfully. Like, was he right about Musa, Musa potentially doing more damage, like wanting to become a specialist? Because like, you can't just become a specialist overnight. Yes, he was absolutely correct. The way he went about doing that was horrible. You didn't need to literally beat her ass. You're you're the trust specialist for years. Of course, you're gonna win a fight against someone who was a mind fairy up until like two weeks ago. So you didn't need to prove your point by literally trying to demolish her. That was un. But that's because he has issues. That's what that was. He has issues. That's why he. That's why he did that. Is because he has he has deep rooted issues, which again stay away from everybody in a romantic sense until you fix those. Stay away. Now you need friends to work through that. But see how I said friends, no relationships, romantic relationships. Please, I'm begging you. Like he didn't need to do that. Of course, was he right? Of course, of course he was right maybe potentially doing more harm than good, trying to become a, 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 a specialist, a hot pocket specialist. But you didn't need to be so um, unbashedly cruel about it, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Didn't need to become, didn't, didn't need to be so, 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 so cruel about it. I use the pink and love. I never mixed those two together. My foundation started lifting on the side. That's not, I'm gonna put powder on top of it though. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So that was uncalled for, but I'm happy Musa got to kind of, she didn't necessarily prove you wrong, but at least got to show you what she was about in the final battle when she, you know, showed us that Musa can be a specialist. Musa can do it all. Musa can do it all. That's what I learned this season is that Musa can do it all. And I loved it. All right, next person we're gonna discuss is Gray. Torn on how I want to start this. You will burn. I'm starting it there, but I'm gonna get nice. Be calm down, calm down. It's just very sad to me seeing young people like Beatrice, but especially Gray, dedicate their lives, their souls, forget for potential love or friendship for somebody else's fight. This isn't even your fight. This is not what Sebastian is doing. He's not he's, he claim he's not doing that for your parents. He's doing that for Sebastian. It's what that's what he's doing. Like you don't want a war. You even said so. You don't want a war, but you're doing it because Sebastian said so. Now, when we learn the reason of why he was doing that, I was like, okay, okay. He said he could bring your brother, bro brother back. That's a pretty good reason. 
that's a pretty good reason. To me, it's not fully enough. Here's because you're doing this to bring your brother back because your parents, because you want your parents to love you because they loved your brother more. My question is, was bringing your brother back going to make your parents love you more? Why would they if the kid they love the most is back? That was really harsh, but I'm confused. I'm, how is that gonna make your parents love you? It doesn't make sense. But I don't expect him to know that. I don't expect him to realize that because Sebastian just took advantage of that. Because if you, if you think about it for longer than 30 seconds, it doesn't make any sense. Why would your parents who, who, are, who are very cruel to you if they're not showing you any love because your brother got murdered, that's unfair of them but why would they automatically start loving you again if the brother that they loved more is back i don't expect him to realize that it was just sebastian's fault for taking advantage of that but i have to i have to dig into you just a little bit because you didn't need to weasel your way into aisha's life case in point you didn't need you i can't i can't have that and that's why you'll burn because that was completely unnecessary you could have infiltrated you had the fake paperwork you had the fake paperwork you didn't need to bother Aisha at all you didn't need to bother her at all you didn't like it makes me like what do you stand for what does gray stand for because Sebastian did take advantage of him he did. He absolutely did. And Sebastian already burned. So I don't need to even say that out loud anymore. But like the little trying to say that to Sebastian at the end, it was, it didn't give like change of heart to me. It just made me be like, ew. What stopped you from doing that before? You even had, you were standing there in front of that castle being like, is this necessary? Do we have to go to war? And you were having a change of heart. But Sebastian said like half a sentence to you and you were like, actually, never mind. We do need to kill all fairies. Even though the girl that I love because I tricked her is a fairy. Yup, yup, that makes perfect sense. So I'm not gonna hold your feet. Like I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not, you will burn, but I'm not going to do, like I'm not going to set the fire as hot because that is fucked up what Sebastian was holding over in him. And for Sebastian to not even be like, I mean, bringing your brother back is not gonna do anything to your, for your relationship with your parents. Does he think like the act of him bringing his brother back went over his parents? But how? if the kid they like more is back. Whatever. I just don't like what he did to Aisha. It was completely unnecessary and there was no point. There was no point. You just wanted to have fun while you infiltrate. You wanted, you, this is, you wanted to have your cake needed too. You wanted to infiltrate the fairy school so your fellow blood witches could come and kill all fairies. And you wanted to have a little fling at the same time. I can't have that. It's not, it's not, it's not working for me. If Aisha forgives you, I'll forgive you, but until I can still hold the grudge if she doesn't want to. I can hold the response that I can be. I can be Percy and take, I can take the weight of the world from you. Why is there, is that an ant? Ew. Sorry. Anyways. Ew. Okay. Next student I would like to discuss is Sam. So Sam, you know, kind of tapped out. Halfway through the season because Sam couldn't handle it anymore. And that was the best thing he could have done for himself. Why, my quest, Sam was really upset that his dad was like, essentially like doing everything for Rosalind. Sam, if two plus two is four, why do you think your father is doing everything that Rosalind asked, asked him to do? Why do you think he's not thinking for himself? Why do you think he's just doing everything she says without so much, without like seeming to care or think about it? she threatened him i don't like that's where i was like sam what what are you talking about what are you talking about you don't understand you don't see why your dad's what else could it be besides that she's threatening him probably about you guys so that made me a little bit confused because i was like 
Sam make the logical next step. Make this, you, you're fairies. It's not, it's blackmail should be nothing new to you guys. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you think of that first? So he's not the brightest. Him also lying to his girlfriend, who's a mind fairy, he's really not the brightest. Why are you lying? And then we end with him trying to kill Rosalind himself. And while I admire the chutzpah, why I admire the drive, and because nobody else wants to do it. Nobody else wants to wants to use the fairy powers and kill Rosalind and end the problem at the source. So I respect him for, for, for I really, I actually do. <sighs> Sam, the method. You couldn't even hide the fucking poison. You couldn't even take the drink and go a place where nobody could see you to put the poison in the drink. You had to pour the poison in the middle of the fucking mixing bar in eyesight of a guard. A guard, didn't, isn't he the guard who died? Really? We, we, we didn't want to, we didn't want to think like anything else. Anything else? I did not blend out this concealer. LOL. Okay. It's very, it's a little bit unserious to me. It's a little bit unserious to me. He didn't hide the poison well. He didn't hide, but he was losing his mind. So I'm not going to do too much on his like method of going about trying to kill Roslyn. I admire him for the determination. I do. I, it was, it was a little haphazardly. I wish we would have more planning, but again, planning is also not a thing, unless you're Aisha, planning is not a thing that we see the, that these people have. So, but I admire the determination. Next up is Sky. Sky was, I really liked Sky this season. I don't know, I would like didn't dislike Sky last season, but like this season Sky became more of a person, like a real person. And I guess finding out your dad isn't your dad, but is your dad, but is not your dad is like going to break that like perfect blonde, like shell open like a walnut. So he's like raw now. He's like a real person now which I like. I think it's I think it's entertaining. He killed Andreas. He's going to be fucked up forever. He's going to be fucked up forever because of that. I hope he heals. It'll be very difficult. And he got his original dad back, but killed his true dad. But he still he hates his original dad. I'm really worried. And his his his, his original dad is like confused as to why Sky doesn't like him. Could you imagine? That's just, that's, that's just a little much to me. Him trying to bla break Bloom out of whatever that conniption was, loved that, loved that. Yes, fight, yes, fight. Him being in jail because of that was a little much. He looked really good this season. I'm not gonna deny that, he looked very good. And the jail breakout scene, cause we knew Sky was like a good, a good specialist, but he really, he's been practicing, maybe because of all this anger, because of everybody in his life lying to him, you know, you, know, you never know. Um, but he's been training him like that jail breakout scene. Like he kind of ate that. He kind of, and then like um, the ass kicking that followed. He kind of ate that. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. The goodbye scene personally pissed me off. It was very dramatic, but like, look at this place. Of course it was super dramatic. So it wasn't like, that's not why it pissed me off. I just thought her going into the realm of darkness was a dumb idea. I just didn't think that that was the smartest thing that we could, that we could possibly do. But you know what? I'll leave it alone. Okay, next up is Musa. I think Musa's hilarious. Um, I think she's so funny, and I think she was my second my favorite is obviously Aisha, but I think she's my second favorite this season. I thought she was so funny. And imagine like having all of the tools to ju judge a situation adequately because you can read everybody's mind must be a mind fuck. And it like when she still had her powers, and I was like, it cannot be good for her to be taking on people's like problems like that and like um tara had to be like you should stop doing that i wish tara was a little harsh but to be honest i think musa needed to hear that 
I really think Muzi needs to hear that because that was not like how how was that gonna benefit anybody? It wasn't benefiting people she was taking the emotions away from, and it certainly was not benefiting her own head, right? So she's worrying me only because the fear that came into her eyes when she got her powers back like my heart sank i was like oh she does not want those powers at all anymore she does not want them at all there has to be a way to like quiet the voices that doesn't involve those grippy bracelets because they don't those don't look very comfortable to me but maybe they're more comfortable than hearing this gloss smells like michael's um it's the patrick ta this gloss it smells like a Michaels. Anyways, they we need to find a way for her to quiet the voices. Maybe the grippy um, bracelets feel better than the voices, but those still scare me because those look very painful. So I'm nervous. I'm I'm nervous personally. But to this season, Musa was eating the girls up in terms of looks wise. She was eating cause you know, she became a specialist essentially overnight so that she could beat ass any day of the week. But she also looked really good. The dresses were eating, her haircut was really working for her this season and her fighting to the death, kind of a baddie. I really like her this season. I thought she was fabulous. Next up is Flora. When we met her, I didn't know what to think because I was like, Tara says you're reckless, but um, Tara doesn't do anything exciting. Um, just like me. I'm not judging her. But I was like, so I don't really know like what to believe. But Flora is a bit of a reckless one. She's gorgeous. She's breathtaking to look at. She's quite reckless. Um, as in a reckless that I personally could not hang out with because Making a dangerous potion, poison, so let me clarify, making a dangerous poison without making the antidote is a reckless that I can't be around. I have no interest in dying a stupid death. And you making a poison without an antidote would be a stupid death to die. And so I couldn't hang out with her, but I would admire her from afar. Her sacrificing herself was I was like, you just got here. And she already is like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give it all up. That's, are we gonna have a fairies go to therapy episode in season three? Why is everyone so willing to like, I think she was struggling with it, but like, especially the mind fairies. Like Musa was horrified when her powers came back. Can we have a therapy session about like the meaning of your powers and like not liking, having an open space to discuss not liking your powers that much? I think we should besides the point but that was wild and the way they depicted it the the thingies just and massive oh i was disturbed i was disturbed like i i guess i respect her for it because she did it for the greater good but it disturbed me there were so many of those bugs there were so many of those bugs so i'm wondering what she's gonna do now because what was Musa, Musa doing when she didn't have her power? She was doing random shit because Rosalind, you know, is a meanie. But Rosalind's not here anymore, is she? Hmm. But that could get better or worse because now Bloom is in La La Land. Um, so I'm scared. But I like Flora. Very reckless. Very reckless. My goodness. But the recklessness saved the entire school. So next up is Tara love Tara that was that gay shit was very cute that was very cute the way they wrote it was really really cute the way they wrote her telling her friends was really really cute the girl the specialist that she really likes was regretting everything telling her that she got back to her with her girlfriend she wants to end that immediately and Tara like did not pick up on that and I'm like I wouldn't have either but I'm telling you through the screen that's, that's what that's what was happening. She was regretting her entire life in that moment. Tara and Flora, I hope we learn more of the very clearly deep rooted backstory behind that relationship. Tara does act like her mother often. And I'm like, what, what like for what? Like what she she did do some very reckless things this season, but the reckless, like I said before, saved your life and your magic. Right? So like, I wonder where we're gonna go from here. 
I want to know why because it can't be just that Tara is just reckless. I thought it was going to be like when she was telling Tara, I thought it was going to be like Tara's in love with Flora. I was wrong. But I'm like, what is it? What is what? What what else is there? I need to know the deeper rooted issues because, you know, I'm nosy. Next person I would like to discuss is Aisha. One, that moral compass line in the very beginning made me laugh the fuck out loud because I guess y'all heard what we were all saying last season and decided to address it directly. So I found that really, really, really funny. I found that really, really funny and I did laugh, but it was a needed line because it was getting a bit ridiculous. It was getting a bit ridiculous, okay? So I'm glad that was addressed. When, before we found out who Grey was, I was like, y'all are doing too much with my sister and Grey. What if she's, conf like, what if, what if you're, what if you're not helping? Like, what everyone was like pushing her to date Grey, pushing, uh, they, uh, look, look what happened, pushing her to be like, you can't be afraid, blah, 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 blah. What if Aisha wants to do things on her own time? And look at the result. Look at the result. I'm gonna be sick, but I already scolded Grey, so I don't need to waste my sister's time with that so she was off having this is what made me really sad she was off having fun and like caring for herself for like the first time ever and that's when everything went to shit when Aisha decided to be selfish for once that's when everything went to shit um that deeply upset me to my core that made me so sad and she was upset because her first plan didn't work, but I would like to talk, Aisha, you had a plan. You had a very detailed plan. Not many of these people could say that. Even the adults. Even the adults. Like, you don't act on half-baked ideas and just go for it. I mean, that's a different type of person, but you don't do that. Your plan just had to be tweaked, and they were. And it worked. It's okay, because she was able to tweak them. But she was like me and like thinking it doesn't work the first time. Like, I'm an idiot, so I'm gonna stop doing it completely. Which is fair, but we should not be that way, is what I'm trying to tell you. We should stop being that way. Apparently it's bad for your mental health. Learn new things every day. Okay, next person I'd like to discuss is Beatrix. want to like Beatrix so bad and I do because I think she's kind of fabulous I think she's kind of fabulous it's just when we keep making the same exact mistakes you're really triggering my pattern recognition you're really really fucking with my head because what do you mean you're Sebastian's minion what do you mean first of all RIP to a real one with deep, deep, deep rooted parental and abandonment issues that caused her to lose nearly all judgment when making decisions. I think she's gonna come back, she better come back. The shadow knight, whoever, was like right on top of her grave. So I think she's gonna come back and I hope she does. I hope she comes back and can grow into her own, not somebody else's problem. She just was everybody's lapdog. It made me realize Rosalind's laptop. You're washing windows because Rosalind just wanted to punish you. And they're all using her like their little devil creature. It was like really, really, really annoying. And I was really upset when her magic was gone um, because her magic was really cool. I thought her, ma I think her magic is really cool. It just made me very upset. She was jumping from one dad figure to the next dad figure. He likes your magic. Sebastian likes your magic. He does not like you. It made me really upset that she didn't realize that, but maybe she will now. But she didn't, she went from Rosalind to Sebastian. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. It didn't work out with like her like makeshift mother figure. So she decided to find like an older brother one instead. And he did that. Sebastian did that. Sebastian knew that Rosalind was, you know, Rosalind and use that to get Beatrix to do his bidding for him. He's a sick and wicked creature, but he's already gone from this planet, so it's totally okay. And I was sitting there watching because when she like, what was the scene where she was like, where like we found out that they were working together and like Beatrix's power? Okay, when they all when they were like in the the office and he was like, I need some magic. And I was like, I was, my reaction was literally, are you fucking serious, Beatrix? Are you serious? 
Are you serious? You were pretending not to have magic for him? Are you serious? When he discards you too? What happens when he discards you too? What happens then? Which he did. Oh my goodness. Like, I was like, it's really gonna suck that she's gonna have to get discarded again to see that this is not working. And now she's dead. And it's not even her fault. It's fucking Sebastian's fault. It's, 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 it's Rosalind's fault too. <laughs> Always working for somebody else. And I was like, I thought Beatrix was better than that because she's fabulous. So I'm like, you need to stay on your own two feet. You're only worth, Beatrix was only worth what she could do for Sebastian. When you have nothing else to offer Sebastian, he's going to get rid of you. Example. A example. The episode. I would prefer Beatrix be a villain on her own, but I guess she's not there yet. Maybe she'll get there. So this, we're getting eight seasons out of this, by the way. Maybe she'll get there eventually in becoming her own villain, but I would fully support her in that. Being evil for her. For nobody else. That's what I want from Beatrix. Be evil for yourself. Stop fighting somebody else's fight. It's just like great. He took advantage of them and had them fighting Sebastian's cause, which was what? World takeover? No, actually Sebastian wanted to end the entire planet. I don't I don't understand. Like, Dane got your ass. Why you had to retaliate so badly? Why would people be afraid of a lifelong lapdog? Why would, why would anybody be, why would, why would anyone be afraid of someone who does not seem to have an original thought until it's far too late? And it's not your fault, but Dane was right. Why would anybody be afraid of you? You're too fabulous to be, to be, to be this, just this completely broken, but it, 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 it tracks. So I'm sorry, Beatrix. R.I.P. We'll see you next season, though, because don't play with me. Don't. She's going to be there next season, right? Because I need us to get closer to Beatrix villain for herself. Beatrix evil for... There's so many reasons to dislike these damn fairies. Y'all can't... You're not even good enough. There's And it, I think it'd be easy to take over these fairies. The queen is never there. The queen is never there. They let blood witches into the place all the time. They seem to have no security. Their, 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 their fighters are so easily mind manipulated. It's like a, a feeding ground. I think she could do it. She just needs more self-confidence. Beatrix just needs more self-confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need her to be a good person for me to like her at all. But I need her to be smart. I need her to be smart. All right, next person we're going to discuss is Stella. So I think I missed her. Though that bug crawling into her skin was, this season was unsettling. That was one of the most unsettling scenes I've ever seen in television. I just don't, I don't like bugs. So start seeing, that's my worst fear is a bug going into my ear and making its way, you know, into my brain. I wanted to vomit. That made me really sad. I liked the Stella and Beatrix friendship. Look, 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 look where we are now. Look, 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 look at where we are now. Nowhere, nowhere, but whatever. First of all, that starting off with Beatrix embarrassing her like three times in a row was hilarious. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Stella's uncle that we met. Um, Sky in that scene, you ate that. His, uh, this uncle, oh my good, no. So it seems like Stella has no good authority adult figures in her life. Everybody seems to be a manipulative wench. That's what, that's what I'm seeing from her family. So, you know, Stella was projecting a lot onto Bloom. She may have been right about Bloom, like wanting to be a part of this so badly, but Bloom also isn't you. Ooh, she's like, I used to be like that too. Bloom isn't you. Technically, technically. And that letter, obviously she was trying to get her mother to love her again, but you had, you wouldn't have written shit down if it wasn't at least like somewhat based in truth. Like you truly did believe that at least a little bit about Bloom. That's sad. Your mother is a piece of work. Like, oh, I, like, I don't even, I'm so sorry that she does that to you and good for you for standing up to her because she was a great lawyer and she had a good plan. Like, how are they supposed to know that 
headmistress, da headmistress Dowling's spirit was inside a plant bulb. How are they supposed to know that? They had a good plan. How are they supposed to know that she became a plant seed to avoid getting her spirit taken away? Like that, that was not your fault that you didn't think of that in your plan, but whatever. So Stella of the season, I like that she had a friend, but look what happened to her friend. Her friend decided because she wanted to know if she had a family because Sebastian was taking advantage of that, decided to go and fight for the blood witches hell bent on killing them all. Also, what would Sebastian have done if Sebastian hates all fairies, Beatrix? What was he going to do with you if he, if he won? Anyways, I'll leave that alone. I like their friendship. Maybe when she re resurrects we'll get a resurgence of it because I think they were I think they were good for each other in terms of like talking to each other because they both don't talk to people because they both don't have friends. Stella has her friends now but like Beatrix these people would like to be your friend you just keep doing shit like this which is why you have no friends. It, Stella's done mean stuff to all of them and they're friends with her they could be friends with you. Stella was friends with you. Once when, um, Beatrice was like, I had nobody. And Stella was like, what about me, girl? Because what about, you can't keep like making friends and then doing them in drafts to get push them away and then being like, why am I alone? What do you think is gonna happen, Beatrix? It made me very sad. It made me very, very sad. Anyways, next character and finally last character is Bloom. Okay, Bloom is not a planner. Bro Bloom is not a planner. Bloom does not think things through in the slightest. Yes, it is your fault that Rosalind is out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm not saying you're a good or bad person. I'm saying it is your fault that Rosalind is out. So now that that's out of the way. Why does she do things without thinking? Why are you digging through Rosalind's desk without an excuse, an excuse ready to go? Why are you like, she's a, a, she's clearly a little bit off her rocker and you don't already have an excuse primed and ready to go. Setting yourself up for failure. Her hair looks amazing. Bloom's hair looked amazing this season. Let me tell it. Bloom's hair looked of the bounce, the volume, yeah. I really like that. So whoever the hairstylist was, you ate that. She trusted Rosalind too fast. Her and Beatrix very clearly share very similar issues. Um, that was too fast. And while Stella might have not been fully off about why she was doing it, I think it was more so of like, I think Stella was kind of right, but like kind of wrong. Writing that in a, like, getting it out by writing her about her really nastily in a letter to your queen mother was foolish. Despite Bloom not being a planner, she's also hyper independent because she's always had to do stuff on her own, but she still thinks she does. It's nonsensical to me because every single time she went to go do something on her own, it ended up worse. Isn't that what happened? Isn't that what happened? Every single time she was trying to do something by herself, it ended up being worse than before. Her deciding just to leave was, made no fucking sense to me. Like for one, just believing Sebastian off rip is wild. What incentive does he have to tell you the full truth? Why wouldn't Sebastian take the truth and twist it? Why, how would Sebastian know what your mother truly wanted? Why, how would he know that? Did he, he didn't know your mother. He's never talked to your mother. He's never even talked to you before. How would he know what your mother wanted? Why wouldn't he lie? Like, how would he know that your mom doesn't want you to have a dragon flame? How would he know that? Who would have told him that? She's leaving based off, off his say so. He's a liar. He's a liar. Whatever. But let's discuss how she went into the realm of darkness, TM. Realm of darkness with nothing but a blazer. Where is the food? Where is the water? Where are the supplies? Where is anything need? Like what? Like my question is, what if she walked into the realm of darkness and her mother happened to be in the very first building that she saw? What if you walked in and a dragon burned you to a crisp? 
because it's the realm of darkness right what if you walked in and there was no building right next to you you had to walk 500 miles to find your mother you would have died because you had no food and no water and no supplies like i'm just and she really just knocked on the door i guess it's supposed to be like she was drawn to her mother's presence so that's how it happened but for me I was very scared for her because I was like, you're just gonna go into the realm of darkness. Nothing, like she could make fire, but like, what about the rest of the human necessities that you need? And then her telling all her friends in a letter, <laughs> her telling Sky in a letter, girl. I would've done the same thing, so I'm not gonna do too much to you, but I also would not have gone into the realm of darkness without any supplies. Personally, one thing about me, I'm a planner. Um, I want to do the haphazardly things too. I just don't do them because I don't have a plan. I'm not a go with the flow type of person. I need to know where the flow is going and at what time. So me and Bloom are a little bit different. But yeah, those are all the characters in Fate the Wing Saga season two. I genuinely enjoyed this season. You know, that last episode was like, I was like, what the fuck? Once Be once it was shown that Beatrix was on Sabat, was like Sebastian's new, me I was like, really? We're, we're gonna do this again. And it, this time it ended in death. So I was really angry, but I did like the season overall. Um, drama, mystique, um, angst, it was all there. The fashions were slightly better this season. You know, Musa, I like Musa's dress. Musa was carrying the fashion on her, on her back heavily. And actually Flora looked good too. Um, like what they were all wearing to that ball was cute. Tara, I don't know what that was, but you know, it's all right. Um, it's all right. Um, we can we can wear pants and suits and look fabulous. It's all right. But I liked it. Um, my favorite characters were Aisha, and Musa, Avi. Avi, I picked the two most fabulous girls there. And Beatrix would have been if the sick if this didn't happen. If if, if the same thing wasn't happening. Season three, we'll see. Cause she better be coming back. But anyways, that's where my thoughts on season two. Um, let me know your guys' thoughts. Who's your favorite character? What do you think is going to happen in season three? I think we're going to obviously find out that she did not, she wanted Beatrix to have the dragon flame. That her mom obviously wanted her to keep it. That's why she put her away. Also, Beatrix is like a thousand years old or something. Not Beatrix, sorry. Bloom is like a gazillion years old now. I think that's what happened. She wanted you to keep the dragon plan. Because why? Sebastian has no incentive to tell you the full truth. Because you don't know anything. Bloom knew nothing about her parents. So he has no incentive nor desire to tell you the full truth. But anyways, so yeah, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram again. And so my recent videos should be linked on your screen right about now. So yeah, have a good rest of your day. Please get your flu shot and your bivalent, bivalent booster if available near you. And yeah, stay safe everybody and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.